welcome to Sea Fishing with CJ. This is episode two of the uh, pendulum cast videos. Uh, in the first video, you saw the introduction, which is basically the the half pendulum, um, which is a it's sort of a halfway house. It's getting you in, used to casting a swing lead. In this episode, we're actually going to be doing the full pendulum, and Brian's going to demonstrate a few casts and then we'll, we'll show you some footage of students and, and they're going and who knows, you might see a crack off in amongst these but that's what we're going to be doing now um, if you need, let's, I, I would suggest if you want to learn a pendulum cast don't learn it off YouTube, have a lesson have a lesson, even if it's just one lesson, just to get the timing right and then you've got, you know what it is, you've got to practice um, yeah, so anyway, enjoy um, and I'll see you on the other side. Right, so Brian's going to have a cut the cast. He's going to talk through what he's doing. All right, guys, well, the first thing is obviously make sure you've got a decent shock leader on there with a decent knot as well. Um, you would want a good, good few turns around the wheel. As you can see, if that's coming off, that's where it goes down to. It's a small knot, so it'll go through the red rings nice and quick without catching. Personally, when I'm setting myself up, I like to have the knot in the same spot every time so I know exactly where it is and keep me thumb out of the way of it. When I'm preparing a cast, I've got a reducer on this one, I'm going to take that off. When I'm preparing a cast, I want the lead a little bit shorter than where my right hand is. Part of that is due to the sloping bank that's just behind me. I'm just going to move forward away from that a little bit. Next thing I'm going to do is really plant my feet. I do not want to be falling over doing this. And I generally start with my arms away from my body, right arm fairly, fairly straight, a little bit of a bend in it, a little bit of bend in the knee so you're nice and relaxed. And then it goes out, back around, and away. And luckily for me on that one, no birdie. It's always a good news, isn't it? The reason I go real low is that you can, you can then get a longer drop on it. And a longer drop enables you to slow everything down, slow the entire cast down. So if it goes slightly wrong somewhere, you've got a good chance of recovering from it. I'm sure you're all aware the downside of bigger casting is longer reeling in time and your arms get tired pretty rapidly. Now, as useful as a big cast can be, finding out exactly where the fish are is a better option because at the end of the day that's what we're down here to do is to catch fish and we'll leave the, leave the distance casting uh, over grass to the lads that are bigger than I am. Right, here we go. Shot leader coming in on the same side, and we're in place. Okay, guys, you can see just how much line's on the spool before we start. Let's see how much of it we can empty out. I'm just going to drop the lead down a little bit more. As I say, right arm straight. I like my arms away from my body. I've got a lot more freedom of movement that way. So we're out, in, and away. There's a fair bit less line on it now, guys. So that's, that's sung out there. Pleased with that. So what we're going to do is to slow everything down in a few moments and do a couple of stopping points along the way so you can see where you need to be with the actual cast. And here we go, fully spooled again, ready to rock and roll for the next one. So we're going to slow things down a little bit. I'm going to stop as I'm going with the cast. So starting position, 
then it will be swinging the lead out and in and you don't actually start pulling until the lead's over in that position so it's pretty much across the beach because at the end of the day you want to be pulling it with the, moving that rod tip getting that rod tip to bend and as it comes round further getting the central portion and uh, getting the central portion of the rod bent at the end of the day guys that's the one thing that's going to send this at any distance is getting that uh, getting that rod bent so we just slow it we slow it down a wee bit again so it's out in and down into that position and again that's where we're going to pull it from, is in there just flick that one so just put it all together one more time lead about right feet in position nice and firm And again, we've been lucky enough today, no birdies at all. It's always good not to get a birdies when you're showing to somebody else. But, you can see the amount of line that's gone off of that, guys. That was a full spool when we started, so it's a reasonable distance out. We had one or two questions came up after part one video about possibly using fixed spools for pendulum casting as well. Absolutely no problem at all guys, however, it's sensible, as you, if you've seen part one you'll see poor Gary did damage his finger a little bit, he is on the mend, but it's really sensible to have something to cover that finger, whether it's a finger stall or like I think it was Terry was uh, explaining he uses an archery glove and the, the leather on that is a bit thicker and it, although you lose a little bit of feel is yet to tear one in half which does happen with the uh, normal th casting um, finger stalls the other option is there is some a few devices on the market for fixed spool wheels like the uh, breakaway um, what was it? I can't remember what's Canon that's the one thank you I know there's one or two other things out there as well, especially there's one particular one, I can't remember the name of it, it's uh, all alloy construction, brilliant if you're using braids, so if you're using a braid um, straight through a thicker braid line, A, I would never hold a braid line whilst pendulum casting, B, this thing is amazing, I actually, use, I've got a couple myself, I just can't remember where I got them from, but uh, the internet, you'll find everything. <laughs> <laughs> We've got an aerial today. We've got the old overhead camera as well on this one guys so let's see if we can uh, get this one right so what we're looking for is the leads going out in and what we want to do is drop the rod tip at this point because we want to come into this sort of position and then pick the lead up from over there to my just behind me to the right so let's And away it's gone. She's gone. <laughs> I 
Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, certainly will. So while Brian's winding that one in, I'm going to have a go. <laughs> so we'll see how you're meant to do it. Let's see how you're not meant to do it. Make sure that I release the, the spool. I have got previous forgetting, for forgetting. So it's out, in. That was going well as well. What I might do is put a, put a ball on the end of this so it's a bit more visible. Yeah, I should have been, uh, get the ball out there and yeah. crack it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I've, I've got it. Let's, let's get that now. Oh, sure. I don't think I'll clip into your clip. I just feel let's see <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Well, hopefully guys you'll be able to see the the ball, it's a lot more visible obviously on a lead weight. The one thing is we're not gonna get anywhere near the distance, which is good for my arms, I can assure you. But let's get the positions. So we're back in, arms away from the body, I'm tracking that ball, it's going out. And hopefully you should be seeing where that got picked up guys, from somewhere off there to that side. Yeah, I had a whoosh. <laughs> Bloody hell, I've got one on. <laughs> if you've never done this with a ball over the sea guys, I recommend it, because it's fighting back. <laughs> All joking aside, it is a useful tool to be able to use um, if you are on the beach. I, it's very, very visible. So you can see it, you can get your own technique a lot better. You're not going to have to wind it back as far. And if you do the unthinkable occurs and you do get a crack off, that's going to do a lot less damage than a lead weight. So it's well worth sort of uh, putting something like this together. This, Brilliant. So this is probably just heard Chris. This is just a, this is a dog ball from Pets at Home with the leash on there. But it's a really useful piece of kit for us as well. So let's just get the feet in, get the out. Good news is I nearly took out a seagull as well. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of seagulls, but nor is Chris. They've had all Chris's goldfish this week out of his pond, and not all of mine two years in a row a few years ago. Unbelievable. I did have a client come down from London and ask why our seagulls are so big. It's just because we feed them on fish and chips down here, don't we? Let's give this another shot. We've got the overhead on as well. So what we try and do is, is capture the different positions where we want to be. So we're going out, in, dropping the tip. And I've reined that one in an awful lot, but hopefully you see the pickup position off to the side there as the lead's coming. So when it goes out, comes back in, and you want it to arc, start arcing back out away from your gain. If you pick it up too soon, you're bending the tip of the rod rather than getting into the meat of it where you want to be. 
I'm getting my arms out in, out away from my body. I've got that push pull. That's really uh, what you need when you're starting to get a bit of additional distance. So it's the, the pull movement off the left arm or left left side, I should say, is quite key to the whole process. But what I don't do is hit it too soon. So we're going to slow this right down. So we're going out, in, drop, and that's where you start to pick it up. It's pretty much where the lead has landed. But by then I'll be following it round with the tip, so I've still got a tight line. Keep the line tighter all the time. Keep the ball or the lead on the inside of the rod tip. So whilst it's on the inside, hopefully you can still pick this up guys, but what, provided you can keep it on the inside, of where the tip is, it will keep the tip bent, it will get starting to bend into the areas you want it to bend into, which is down into these portions. That's where the oomph comes, that's where you're going to get that lead sent out a big distance. So if you're going to land it into, if you're practicing it, and you, when you get that dip, and what we're looking at, you're going from there, there, that's where the dip comes in, and that's where your left arm is going high, so you get that pull when you're coming round. It's that pull push thing going in from that position. So we give that one more go there, guys. So it's away, in, round. And my left arm should have been a bit higher, really. Getting lazy. I would think the battery's going to run out on this pretty soon. I might be able to get one in. That was going. That was on his travels, wasn't it? It was. It was on his travels, but obviously just fluffed up the plane. Right. <laughs> it's, a, it's always a bonus. <laughs> be interesting to see because that hopefully filmed the line, so it will see the line lift yeah. up and it's cracked off right by the reel, isn't it? Yeah, it's cracked off of the reel. It's, it's, it, it obviously started to overtake itself on the reel, and then loop, you know, just tie itself into a loop. Right, I've got to bring this down because it's beeping at me. You have to be careful, I've been bitten by it before. Yeah, the flight. Yeah. Woo! Just one for the road, guys. managed to take the beach with me yeah. and that's why I needed a slightly shorter drop I needed a slightly shorter drop with this uh, shingle bank right. I hope you've all enjoyed this um, thank you very much to Brian for coming along and, uh, and doing this we'll put the video out um, I know that Brian's available for doing lessons uh, and you can you can find him on his Facebook page if you don't live anywhere local to south uh, to East Sussex 
go into your local tackle shop. There are plenty of uh, coaching cast, uh, coaching, casting coaches. Casting coaches as well. Casting coaches <laughs> out there. Um, and they're, you know, some of them, they make a living out of it. Some of them, they do it just for the love of it. Um, but yeah, get out there and, and improve your casting. You know, we had a, a debate with somebody on, one, on, on the first uh, thing that we put out. Um, yeah. About someone saying you don't need to cast a long way. Well, yeah, you're right. Quite often, you're casting over the fish if you're casting a long way. But what it does do, it gives you that scope. So on the day when the fish are feeding a long way out, you can reach them. Whereas the guy who can only flop it into the into the channel at the bottom of the beach, he's not going to catch yeah. fish. You know, and if you fish with two rods, it means you can whack one out and you can keep one in, and, and it gives you that bit of variety and scope. So, and also, it's it's it's. Good. It keeps you fit, I can assure you that, yeah, guys. Yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, yeah. build your wrists up, behave yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Chris is absolutely right. Um, it does give you scope if the fish are out further to be able to pick them out um, or, or give you that a better opportunity. Yeah. Uh, and, and we've said through this um, this video and the previous one, it's great opportunity. It's a great tool to have in your locker to be able to bang it out an awfully long way, but find out where the fish are search around different distances slightly away from the either side yeah. don't just bang out to the same spot every time if you're not catching work it and and the last thing just to reinforce what brian said at the start of this if you are doing power casting you have got to have a shot leader and the rule of thumb is a 10 pound breaking strain for every ounce that you're casting and i personally like to put an extra 10 pounds yeah, on top similar of that. So if I'm casting a five ounce lead, I will put a 60 pound yeah. uh, shot lever on there. Yeah. And it's important that you do that. You could probably get away with a lighter shot lever than that, but the day you crack off, that lead is going to go down the beach. And you know, a five ounce lead traveling at the speeds they do when you cast, that is a bullet. It's, it's, a, a, bullet. it's a five ounce bullet flying around, guys. So the, the, the other part to that really is, don't pendulum cast on a very crowded beach. No. You know, it's, at the end of the day, it's everybody else's safety uh, and your peace of mind. Yeah. But other than that, get out there and give it a go. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys. Yeah. <laughs>